have a very large example, about a five foot, fairly large example, five foot of a spectacled caiman here in our lagoon. Now the crazy thing is, this is a brackish water lagoon. So, what we're seeing here is salt water coming in from the ocean, along with fresh water coming in from the land. So you have a mixture of the two, which is called brackish water. Now, watch this. You think that's cool? Watch this. Look out of the lagoon. And look at all those eyes. Tonight, we counted about 35. There's one right there, see so if you can zoom in on him. We counted about 35 to 40 individual came in in this tiny little patch of water, which in the dry season here has turned into more of a small pond as opposed to the normally very large lagoon that it usually is. Now, these members of the crocodilian family are very, very efficient predators. They digest most of their food, very much like the crocodiles at the Cayman Bridge we talked about earlier this trip. These guys don't get that big. Five feet is average size for a, a decent sized Cayman. Six to seven feet is very large. This guy here, we're pretty sure we've met up with this male or female before. Probably about five and a half, six feet in length. There might even be one, as far as we know, bigger in this lagoon that we may have handled in the past. Uh, these guys are one of the few reptiles like crocodilians known to make nests. So these guys will actually make nests out of big rotting vegetation and lay their eggs in them. Ooh, there's some action going on. They will make nests out of big bunches of rotting vegetation and then they will actually incubate the eggs and stay there during the entire incubation period. They have something called temperature dependent sex, uh, temperature dependent sex determination, which means basically that if the eggs are incubated under hotter conditions, that the eggs will be male. If they're incubated under cooler conditions, the eggs will be female. I'm trying to hurry here, the neighbor's dog's barking. Watch this, I'm gonna throw a stick in, see if we can get the guy out Okay. You got it on him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hang on, just a second. That's how, that's how I got him in this far. Okay, you got him? Mm -hmm. Hang on. Oh, baby. There he is, folks. In all, in all his beautiful... Perfect, right to the face. In all his beautiful prehistoric glory. These guys are a survivor. I'm a survivor, I'm gonna work harder. This guy has been a survivor for hundreds of millions of years. This evolutionary uh, tale ends well for these guys. Them and the Chelonians, the turtles, the crocodilians, have been around for hundreds of millions of years since before even the dinosaur times. One more time, I'm gonna throw this stick. Let's see if we can't get him to move a little bit for you guys. Oh, hang on. The reason why he responds even to something like a stick, even though obviously the stick is not his prey, is because of the fact that they have these little tiny dots all around their face, which actually detect, kind of like a shark with the ampullae of Lorenzi, detect the faint electrical impulses through the water. Let's watch again. Okay, cool. You ready? Mm-hmm. Did you get that? Mm-hmm. Ah, and he's discovered it's not actually anything worth eating. There's a smaller one coming up. This guy's about three and a half feet. Whoa, look at that. And there's a bunch of three-footers. Ooh, we got some action going on tonight. We are in tons of activity here in our Cayman Lagoon. This guy right here is more than likely the king and or queen of our lagoon. So, let me see one more time if I can get them to stir a little bit for you folks back home. Up oh, there he is. Wait for the little one to come in closer. Maybe we'll see a fight. Okay, I'm going to do this one slightly to the left. You ready? <laughs> that little one's like, I ain't going near that big one. Okay, I ain't nice to get her. My mama raised a coward, but not a fool. All right. I don't think they're gonna move much more. Now, if it wasn't for all this mud, and the fact that we got our neighbor's dogs barking at us, I'd be out there counting the caiman uh, individually, if you will. Next year, we're bringing back a tagging system that's a, like a little microchip, kind of like the Avid microchips. Goes under the skin, nice and gentle, has a number, you can pull it up, read information about them, right when you catch them, so we can start doing real population studies. Because based on this, you getting all that? 
<laughs> we have quite a vivid and valid population, even just here in this small lagoon. Probably all relatives of that big guy right there. So, we're gonna head out tonight, relieve ourselves of the neighbor's barking dogs. Well, I don't know what's gonna top this, ladies and gents, but we are definitely gonna move on out. Our night hike's coming to an end. We're gonna be leaving tomorrow and moving on to our next great adventure, Bocas del Toro, Panama.